Hi, my name is John Rizzo. I've been a photographer for 35 years, and I'd like to talk to you today about how you can break down and demystify how to use a DSLR camera. DSLR stands for Digital Single Lens Reflex. Single Lens Reflex means that you're actually looking through the lens when you're framing your shot as opposed to holding up a cell phone and, you, and you're, you're looking at the back of the camera. You're actually looking through the lens. So, the most important thing that we should talk about before we discuss the three main areas that you are going to need to learn how to control is that you should set your camera on manual exposure, not aperture preferred or shutter preferred, shutter priority. And the reason for that is that when you have it set on the preferred modes and not manual, then the camera is making the decision on what your shutter speed or what your aperture is going to be. When the camera makes the decision, you don't have the control. Like for example, if you have it on aperture preferred, the camera is going to decide whether you should use a high f-stop or a low f-stop, and that's going to control how much focus you have. If you put it on shutter preferred, it's going to make the decision on how fast or slow the shutter speed is. So if you have someone running by and you want to freeze that action and the preferred mode has selected a slow shutter speed, then that picture is going not to be in focus. It'll be blurry. People often say to me, my pictures came out great last year, but this year they were terrible. What did I do differently? Well, that's exactly what happened is that the camera was not being used on manual and you weren't controlling uh, the shutter, the aperture, the ISO, etc. So let's get used to using the camera in manual mode. And in using the camera in manual mode, you will be using your light meter. We'll talk a little bit more about that down the road. But let's, let's keep this simple and let's break it down to shutter speed. So the shutter speed is going to control whether or not you can freeze action. For example, if you're photographing a flower, something stationary, or if you're photographing someone running, you need different shutter speeds in order to capture that action. The flower is stationary, but the person who's running is not. So that's very, very important. There are some basic rules with shutter speed. For example, if you're shooting an athlete, say you're photographing a football game or a car is going by, you'll have to use a faster shutter speed. But how fast? Well, there are some good rules of thumb. What I would recommend is that uh, you use at least one over 500, one 500th of a second if you want to freeze someone who is running. Faster is better, too. With digital cameras, the beauty is that the learning can be very much expedited because you can see what you're doing. If you're making a mistake, you can see it right away. So take full advantage of looking at the back of your camera and being able to see if you wanted to freeze action and the action is not frozen, then you need to go higher up with your shutter speed. Another good rule of thumb has to do with uh, how steady your hands are. Now, hand holding a camera, not using a tripod, the rule is never shoot anything slower than one over 60th of a second. One 60th of a second. Now, everyone's hands are different, so if you are keeping your camera at one over 60, and you're finding that your pictures are still not sharp, then you need to go a little bit faster. Also, you can go slower if you can steady yourself and lean against the wall. Photographers often do that in low light situations when they don't have a tripod. They find a way to make the camera stationary while still hand holding it. I often hold my breath. I get myself in position, I lean my body against the wall, I hold my breath, and then I click the shutter. That works very well. So let's recap for a second. The shutter speed does two things. Number one, it controls how much light is coming into the camera. So if you're using a slower shutter speed, more light will be coming into the camera. And if it's a faster shutter speed, less light will be coming in. And also it controls how you freeze action. The second thing that I'd like to talk to you about is the aperture or the f-stop. Much like the shutter speed, the aperture or f-stop controls two things. Number one, it controls how much light is getting to the sensor. And number two, it controls how much of your image will be in focus. Now, if you started using, started doing photography with a film camera, 
then you would set the f-stop by touching your lens and moving the barrel of the lens with those little clicks. We don't do that anymore. With digital cameras, you actually make that adjustment on the camera body. So it's easier to do it. Uh, your hand is in one position. Most cameras have uh, an f-stop range of f1.4 up to f32. It varies depending on what kind of lens you're using, but nevertheless, there is a wide disparity in the numbers. What's confusing is that the lower number, the f2.8, f2, f1.4, those are the largest openings. Those refer to the widest openings that the lens can make, whereas the higher numbers, f22, f32, those refer to the smallest openings. So you have to memorize that and, and get a handle on that so that you understand the difference between those, which I'm going to explain right now. When you're using the lens wide open, when, when we say wide open, we mean the largest possible opening, f2, f2.8, f1.4, f whatever your lens is. That means that, number one, you'll be letting the maximum amount of light into the camera, into the sensor. But it also means that you will have very little depth of field. And what I mean by depth of field is the amount of the image that will be in focus. Now, having shallow or short depth of field is something that many photographers want because it allows them to isolate their subject. Nothing will be in focus except their subject. So that's important. You have to also understand that the way that lenses are manufactured is that they're not specifically designed to be sharp when the wide apertures are used. The lenses are usually sharpest when they're at the mid-range, like f11, f16, or at the high range, f32. So what that means is that as you stop down the lens, in other words, as you close it down to make the opening smaller, you're also increasing the amount of the image that's going to be in focus. If you have a group of people lined up, or let's, let's say you're, you're shooting a, a group or a band or um, you know any kind of large grouping where you have people on the edges, you don't want those people to be out of focus. The smart way would be to find a situation where you have enough light and you can stop that lens down to f16 or f22 so that everyone is in focus and the focus is the same from the center of the image out to the edges. Well, thank you for listening. I hope these tips were helpful and you can improve your photography by using them. If you'd like to come to Africa with us on one of our tours, which are open to all ages, families, and groups, please visit www.africaphototours.com. And I look forward to working with you more. Thank you so much.